All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning if you're joining us from the West Coast. Uh, welcome to another session of Coastal Law webinar series. My name is Yunus Lari. I am an attorney, um, an alumni of Florida Coastal, an admissions counselor in the Office of Admissions, and uh, will be your host today. Uh, I just want to thank you for being here, uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule, I'm sure, uh, to be here with us. We certainly appreciate that and we'll do our best to make it worth your while. Uh, today, I am delighted uh, to be joined by my good friend and colleague, uh, Mrs. Kamisha Presley. He is also, uh, she rather is uh, also an alumni of the school, is a practicing family law attorney and an admissions counselor. Uh, she has prepared for you a short presentation on our two-year accelerated uh, program, its features and what to expect. Um, although uh, in upkeeping with the accelerated theme, today's webinar uh, will be shorter than usual. Um, if you are, <clears throat> um, if if you if you have been to these webinars before, you know that we usually go about uh, maybe 45 minutes or so today. <clears throat> we'll have a very accelerated webinar, maybe about 20 minutes uh, or so. Uh, so uh, I definitely encourage you to ask more questions. Uh, if you're here, it means that you are interested uh, or at least uh, considering uh, attending the two-year accelerated program. I personally find it to be a very innovative, uh, a very interesting program, especially for those uh, who will want to be in and out of law school uh, as soon as possible in the most efficient uh, manner. So keep as many, uh, uh, rather ask as many questions as you feel necessary uh, about any aspect of, of the program. And uh, both me and Kamisha, we're, uh, we're both, as I mentioned, alumni of the school. So we have a little bit of experience with going to class, the schedules, all those kind of things. We are both practicing attorneys and we are both in uh, admission. So uh, between the two of us, I'm sure we can find the answer for you. If, even if we can't, uh, we'll get your contact information and we'll get the answer to you um, as soon as possible. Now, <clears throat> without any, uh, any further ado, I, I give you Mrs. Kamisha Presley. Uh, Kamisha, are you there? Take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Eunice. I am Kamisha Presley, and as Yuna said, I am a graduate of Florida Coastal. I graduated in 2012. Since 2013, I have been a family law attorney, and I am in my first year as an admissions counselor here at Florida Coastal. And today we're going to talk about our two-year accelerated program. Okay. Um, Eunice will make sure that these slides are available to you all. Historically, law school is a three-year endeavor. Students begin classes in the fall and graduate 90 credit hours and six semesters later. But today, in today's fast-paced modern world, many students are looking for um, entering the workforce even sooner. It's still a viable option for most students to do the traditional three years. And about three years ago, Florida Coastal introduced a two-year program. Highly motivated students are are invited and encouraged to apply for the two-year program. Students definitely need to plan ahead because the program only enrolls in the spring term. That means classes start in late January. If you are registered right now for the December 2016 LSAT, which is on Saturday, December 3rd, you are perfectly fine and you may be eligible to apply for our two-year program starting in January. Classes begin on January 23rd. You are still required to complete the 90 hours and you do have six semesters to do it, but instead of three years, you're doing the program in two years. That means you're going to classes spring, summer, fall, spring, summer, fall, back to back for two years. Like I said, the basic information, the two-year program began about three years ago, only enrolls in the spring term. The last LSAT exam allowed is the December LSAT. It's three semesters in two years and requires 90 hours to graduate. You might be asking what sets this program apart from the traditional three-year program? And the answer is time or the lack of time. Um, for me personally, I began law school. My daughter was two months old and I worked, um, I needed to work part-time while I was in school full-time. So for me, students such as myself, the two-year program is not viable. But if you're able to dedicate the time that it takes to put into the program, it is definitely for you. 
in a two-year program, do you get semesters off? You do not get any semesters off. You're really going to school spring, summer, fall, back to back for two years straight. Whereas the traditional three-year student, you have spring break, summer break, and winter break. During those breaks in the two-year program, you are in school the entire time. That's a good thing though. That means that you're able to enter the workforce sooner and you have an additional one year that you're not in law school anymore. I wouldn't recommend the two-year program for working professionals. That's for people who are already full-time employed, you're happy in your career and you wanna get your JD. The two-year program is not for you only because you will not have all the time to work in your job. If you have an employer who's willing to work with you, they're willing to allow you to put your job on hold for the two years, that's perfectly great. That's a fantastic opportunity. But if you're in a, in a career where they need you to work during that time, the program is not for you. You're doing a full year, a full three year law school load in just two years. So when students are off for the summer and they come back in late August for school, you're coming back before then, even two weeks before then. You're here for our intercessions. Those are shorter classes um, for about a week or two and they're truncated material. So while most students have that time to prepare for the next semester, you're already in school, as in you're still in school. Can you work full-time or part-time? If you're if you're required for you to work in terms of you have family to take care of, elder parents you're caring for, it is possible to have a part-time job. I would definitely keep in touch with the Office of Admissions, um, Student Affairs, the Dean's Office. Let us know what your particular situation is so we can help you be successful in the two-year program. We also, students in this program are also eligible to be invited to participate in our honor societies. That is our law review, moot court, and mock trial. The honor societies are fantastic for a number of reasons. You're going to get hands-on experience when it comes to drafting appellate briefs, being in the courtroom, arguing motions, and those type of things. Usually students put a lot of time and effort into those programs, into those societies. You're demonstrating to the school that you're going to go above and beyond your usual classwork. You're able to do that in the two-year program. It's not easy, but it is doable if you put the time in there. There's many benefits to that. Okay, let's talk about the degree requirements. In order for you to graduate from the two-year program, you must complete 90 credit hours. I can provide you a breakdown. I can also provide you the link on the website that breaks down all of our credits. You must have a cumulative GPA of 2.0 or higher. That's the GPA that you're going to be required to keep for the most part in the any JD program you go into, whether it's full-time, part-time day, part-time evening, or the two-year accelerated program. You must keep a 2.0 or higher. Um, rest assured, the Office of Student Affairs will be sure to let you know if your GPA is in a range where we want to talk to you to find resources for you to help you keep your GPA above that minimum 2.0. Um, a student must conduct him or herself as fit candidate for admission to the bar. Again, that's the same for anyone, any student, in any program. During your entire time in law school, you must conduct yourself as if you're going to sit for the bar. Um, for example, for the Florida bar, there are certain things you must disclose, and that includes behavior before law school and during law school. So while you're in the two-year program, you must continue to, to behave in, the, in a manner that's fitting of a candidate for admission to the bar. Another degree requirement is satisfying all outstanding account balances owed. That means when it comes time for graduation, you are not behind on any of your finances, that your financial aid is taken care of for a semester, you don't have a balance owed to the law school. You must complete at least 10 legal pro bono hours. And these hours must be completed before your final semester of law school. It is very easy to complete 10 hours. Most people complete more than 10 hours. Personally, when I was in law school, I completed over I want to say 170 hours, and I was able to graduate with the pro bono honors. The pro bono honors is just another way that you can show future employers how much effort, time, and sacrifice you put into your studies here at Florida Coastal. There are many workable projects and that you can do through the city, through the school, and our community to get pro bono hours. I see we have a question from Tim Davis. The question is, how many hours per week do you spend for the regular program versus how many hours per week for this program. In the traditional program, you can full-time day, you can expect to be on class, on campus in class from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, for me, I would then go home, feed my daughter, and then I would study from about 8 p.m. to midnight. 
sleep until about 6 a.m., get up and do it all over again. On the accelerated program, you're doing the exact same thing, but you're doing it all year long. So for me, I was able to have my summers where I worked for the most part. I had spring break and I had winter break where I was able to study, catch up on a new work. During the two-year program, you do not have that time. You were in class the entire time, the entire year. It is about finding that balance between studying and personal life. It's about finding that balance between your home, your social life, and your school life. Um, again, this is a very rigorous project, a rigorous program, and it's important to know who you are as a student. Um, to explain that, you are more than welcome to make an appointment with your so your admissions counselor. We can walk you through the process. Okay. How do you apply to the to your program? The application is available through LSAC, your student portal, and on our website. The same documents are needed for the the traditional program. These are your undergraduate and postgraduate transcripts, your two letters of recommendation, your personal statement, your resume, and your LSAT score. Um, a lot of students ask me, do we weigh heavily on the, U on the undergrad GPA or your master's work GPA? And I say we look at all of that. Here at Florida Coastal, we take a holistic approach when it comes to reviewing your application. We don't just look at your GPA and your LSAT and decide on that. We look at all of it. Your undergraduate GPA is important. Um, at this point, your GPA is set in stone. There's nothing you can do to change that, but that doesn't mean you can hide from it. What you can do is talk about it in your personal statement, and if you need to, you can write an academic addendum. Tell the admissions committee where you were then as a student. If your GPA was really low your freshman year of college and you were able to get it higher towards the end of graduating, talk about that. That alone lets us know that you may be able to handle a rigorous program such as the two-year accelerated program. You're demonstrating to the admissions committee that you met, you figured out who you were as a student during school and you raised your GPA. Um, that's a really fantastic way for you to make yourself more um, competitive in terms of applying for the program. For your letters of recommendation, I always suggest students don't have family or friends write your letters of recommendation. Seek someone who knows who you are as either a student or as an employee, whether that's um, a boss who has seen you handle difficult projects, a professor. You might not have had straight A's in the class, but they can talk about your efforts. They can talk about where you started and where you ended as a student. You want letters that talk about you as a person, about anecdotes, personal things that you have done, things that the writer has seen you do, not just adjectives. Kamisha is very smart. Kamisha is very helpful. That's great, but what has Kamisha done? And that's the kind of letters we want to see here at Florida Coastal. Personal statement. In your personal statement, especially if you're applying for the two-year program, what can you tell us? What can you tell the admissions committee that sets you apart from other students? Can you talk about any rigorous programs you've completed in the past? Talk about your ability to thrive under pressure. Talk about your ability to handle a fast-paced environment. All, all of these things that you can do to make your, your application more and more competitive, I would consider thinking about meeting with your admissions counselor, just picking their brain to see what they have to say, what little tips they may have for you. Your resume. This should not be a resume like you are applying for um, a career or a fast food job. If I were applying to work at Target today, my resume would be really short, bullet points. That's not the kind of resume you want to have for your application, especially for this program. Your resume should be more of a conversation. We should be able to see what you've done and what you plan to do. It's perfectly fine to have an object objective at the top of your resume that tells the admission committee what you want to do with your JD. When you get your Juris Doctor from Florida Coastal, where are you going to go with that? These are all little things that you can add to your application to make you more competitive, and that way you're showing you have the, the, the grit, the rigor to handle this program. Your LSAT score. Your LSAT score is important because it's, it's helpful when it comes to merit-based scholarships, but your LSAT score does not make you a person. So based on your LSAT score, we're going to use that as well as the entire application packet to determine if you can handle, can you succeed, can you thrive in the two-year accelerated program. For fall 2016, Coastal Law's median LSAT was a 146. To be considered for the two-year program, you would need an LSAT in the mid to high 140s and higher. A strong LSAT and a strong GPA together are strong credentials. But like I said, we do take a holistic approach when it comes to evaluating your application packet. So your LSAT is not the end-all be-all, but it is important. 
I see we have a question from Peter that says, when do you apply to the two-year program? The two-year program only be enrolls for the spring semester. Classes start in late January. So today is Wednesday, November 16th. If you wanted to enroll in the two-year program for January, spring 2017, you need to, you can apply today. Contact Florida Coastal um, Admissions, Office of Admissions. We'll put you in touch with your particular counselor and we will help you along the way. If you have already taken the LSAT, you can use that score. If you are registered for the December 2016 LSAT, you can use that score as well. That score will be available in time for you to complete your application. If you are not registered for the December LSAT, it is very unlikely that you'll be able to apply for the spring 2017 accelerated program. I would suggest sitting for the February June or September LSATs and applying again for January 2018. Again, reach out to the Office of Admissions, reach out to your counselor. If you don't know who your counselor is, you can email me or units will be able to point you in the right direction. Lastly, we're going to talk about the benefits of a two-year program. Why would someone want to complete law school in two years instead of taking their time and doing three years? It really depends on what you want to do and when you want to do it. Again, for me, go, doing the two-year program would not have been beneficial for me because of my situation, married with a young daughter. If you don't have those particular times to handle, if you don't have the family to take care of right now, then the two-year program is definitely something for you to take, to take into consideration. The benefits include saving a full year of living expenses. If you go the three-year traditional route, you're going to be in Jacksonville in law school for three years. But if you do the two-year program, you're only going to be in school for two years, which is, like I said, it's a year off that so you don't have to pay your living expenses, your rent, your car note, those things. Smaller first semester classes. The same thing goes for students who start the three-year program in the spring as compared to in the fall. In the fall, you're going to have larger classes because most people apply for the traditional three years that begins in the fall. If you do the accelerated program, there will be fewer students in the program. So for your first semester, you will have much smaller classes. That means you're going to have more personal attention from your professors. Um, here at Florida Coastal, we pride ourselves on our open door policy. Last week, um, Dean DeVito speaking to a panel of prospective students, and he talked about our glass doors. Here at Florida Coastal, all of the offices have glass doors. That means the professors are waiting for you. You're able to go in and meet with your professor. They're going to know who you are and be able to help you. You don't have to feel as though you are just a faceless person in a room full of students. If you are more like me and you are more anxious when it comes to speaking to professors, they are very helpful in terms of giving you their numbers to call, their emails. I remember emailing my LP professor at 2 a.m. and she answered very quickly. And so that was pretty awesome to be in a school where the professors not only wanted me to get in, but to stay in and to complete the program. Another benefit is entering the workforce sooner. Like I said, this is a modern, fast-paced world. People are on the move all the time. If you know that you are the type of student who can be organized, who can be diligent to get through this program, you would graduate law school in two years, not three years. That puts you out a year ahead of your current colleagues. You'll be able to, to apply to jobs even that much quicker. Another benefit is the final semester is tuition free. So I already said that the third year you're not paying for and I'm saying you're not paying for your last semester. That's at least $50,000 that you're not paying for your law degree. If you're able to write a check today for law school, that's fantastic. But if you're not, if you're like me and you were working part-time through law school or you relied heavily on your scholarships, it's really important that you, that you see this benefit that your final semester is tuition-free. And lastly, the final benefit is free bar prep. Unfortunately, I don't think students always think ahead that means when you get into law school, it's just three years of studying and doing work. But after you graduate law school, you still have to take the bar. And for me, that was the Florida bar. I remember some students, we graduated on a Saturday, bar prep started on Monday, and they had no idea what they were going to do in terms of paying for the bar prep. I'm telling you now, think about that. In the two-year accelerated program, your bar prep is free and provided to you. That's another $2,000 you don't have to worry about. I will remind you that during bar prep, you will have to worry about your living expenses because you should not be working during that time. It's just not really possible to study for the bar and work full time. But again, a benefit of the two-year program is that you will be able to have your bar prep free.
I see our, we have a question from Susan. Must you have a master's degree to be able to do the JD program? No, ma'am. To apply to Florida Coastal JD program, you need a four-year bachelor degree. It doesn't matter what the degree is in, as long as it's from an accredited university. I have my degree in political science and justice studies. Um, my husband is also a Florida Coastal 2012 graduate. His degree is history. So you do not have to have a master's degree as long as you have a JD. Having a master's degree will not hurt you, of course. It's another opportunity to show the admissions committee that you are serious about your studies and that you can handle a rigorous program. We have a question from Valerie. How long is the bar prep program? Bar prep is typically two months. Um, I graduated May 2012. I started bar prep that next Monday, and it ran until the middle of July. And then we had a week off before the Florida bar. Well, a week off from the program. That does not mean a week off from studying. Um, personally, I began bar prep January 2012. I was very nervous about taking the Florida bar. I was paying out of pocket. I knew that I could only afford to take it one time. So I began bar prep in January by purchasing my own books. I went on Craigslist, I went on Amazon, Google. I contacted friends who graduated previously and I borrowed as much material as I could and I just absorbed as much as I could for as long as I could. So from January to May, I did my own, um, I would get, I would say slightly rigorous studying. And then from May until July, I did the bar program and I passed the Florida bar my first time. So it's definitely doable. It's definitely doable. Are there any more questions? All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Misha. I, I want to ask you to uh, stick around a few, a couple more minutes, uh, just in case we have more questions. Uh, I see that Timothy uh, Timothy Davis had a question. Uh, Timothy, I tried to uh, look it up in our uh, website. The question is uh, for those of you listening. How many hours per week do you uh, spend for regular program versus how many hours per week uh, for this program? Uh, for the regular program, if you're a full-time uh, student, uh, it is ranging between 12 to 14 hours. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find it for the two-year accelerated program. I wasn't a part of the two-year accelerated. I could have told you from my own personal experience. Uh, however, uh, my understanding is that it won't be much different. Uh, your regular semester is during the fall or spring uh, are pretty much the same as it would have been uh, for a full-time student, except that uh, you will have classes uh, preset or uh, previously set schedule uh, classes for a uh, summer. Uh, although you will have preset schedules, uh, most of your program will be preset because it's going to be a little more denser in terms of um, the scheduling and putting the classes together. You will still have the opportunity uh, to choose uh, between the um, higher division classes and the, so your 2L year and the 3L year. Uh, so you will uh, definitely have that experience as well. Um, I just want to, uh, once again, thank Kamisha for a very comprehensive uh, piece of uh, presentation and, uh, and information. Uh, well done. Thank you very much, Kamisha. And uh, of course, uh, thank you all of you guys for being here. I uh, just want to note that uh, Today, we broke uh, the records for the number of people who are attending um, this, uh, this webinar. So that's great. That's great, great news for us. Uh, here came, uh, comes another question from Timothy. Uh, do you or any law school ever take someone uh, with uh, lots of other credits, 140 plus uh, credit, but do not have a bachelor? Um, I'm not aware if any other law school would accept a student without a bachelor degree. We definitely don't. So I'm afraid, uh, Timothy, that's an ABA requirement for students uh, to have at least a bachelor degree before they can apply uh, for law school for a JD degree. Um, before we wrap this up, uh, any other question? Um, I know we're uh, we're finishing a little, uh, like I mentioned, at the top of the uh, a, a webinar that this is going to be an accelerated webinar. Uh, so uh, we're right on time with that one. But is, is there any other question? It does not have to be about this program as long as we can answer it here um, about law school, about the city of Jacksonville, for those of you who are uh, joining us from outside of the state or from outside of the city of Jacksonville. Uh, go ahead and ask it here. 
now would be the time. Okay, seems like there's no other question. Of course, you will always have access to all of us here in the Office of Admissions. Uh, we will reach out. I will personally reach out to all of you who attended today to thank you for your participation. Like I said, we really do appreciate you guys being here. It shows us that we are doing uh, uh, what is uh, what, what you guys want us to be doing in terms of uh, distributing information and answering questions. So I'll reach out to you guys. Uh, through that, you will have uh, my email and the admissions office email uh, and contact information. Feel free to email us. Give us a phone call. Um, we're here to assist you. We'll be more than happy to assist you through the application process and beyond. And uh, wait, wait, there's there's another question. We have a, a late coming question. Peter is asking, uh, are there any scholarships available for the program? Yes, absolutely. All these scholarships, uh, merit-based and non-merit-based scholarships that are available uh, to all the other programs are also available for this program. Just a brief overview of the scholarships. Scholarships are uh, non-merit scholarships and merit-based scholarships. Merit-based scholarships are the ones that are automatically considered for students uh, based on their academic credentials. So when you send in your application based on your academic credential, you don't have to do anything extra. You will automatically be considered for the merit-based scholarship. Non-merit-based scholarships, there's a list of them. Uh, on our website, under the admissions tab, you can find it there. We have scholarships like uh, diversity and inclusion, faith-based scholarship, and also first responders uh, that uh, if you are eligible for, you can take advantage of. Uh, I hope that answered your question, Peter. Uh, thanks for all the good questions. Uh, Peter, Timothy, uh, uh, Valerie, Suzanne, um, all of you, thanks for participating. Um, let's see. Uh, well, you're very welcome, Peter. Um, and um, once again, thanks for being here. Have a great rest of today. And I will see you guys again in another uh, webinar in about uh, two or three weeks. We will let you know what that is going to be about, what the title is, and uh, we will take it from there. Have a great rest of today. Goodbye, everyone.